So I just landed in Paris, France, and today marks a very monumental day in the span of my travels. So I did it. I filled up my entire passport. Now, as grateful as I am to have accomplished this goal, it kind of puts a full-time traveler in an odd situation. I am stuck in Paris until I can get a new passport. See, my plan was to fly to India the following week, so I needed to figure out this passport situation quickly. I actually have no idea what I'm gonna do. My options were limited to flying all the way back to the US and mailing my passport, which takes 10 weeks, or making an appointment at the US Embassy in Paris for a new passport. The only problem, there wasn't any appointments available for three full months. Okay, there it is. That is the US Embassy. Wish me luck. So without an appointment, I just showed up at the US Embassy and I told them my story and how I needed a passport immediately. And lo and behold, just three hours later, I was issued something I didn't even know existed, an emergency US passport. It's pretty, it's purple. I'm in an emergency situation. My emergency is that I really wanna to go to India. From what they told me at the embassy, it's pretty much a normal US passport, but the difference is it expires in one year and it only has five full visa pages. I wasted no time and I immediately applied online for my Indian e-visa. And with just four days remaining until my flight to India, I had no time to lose. And with no expectation of being declined, I got everything prepared for my long awaited trip to India until the day of the flight. I got hit with a big fat rejection. So my visa to India was just uh, rejected. I was rejected. The special purple passport that the US government blessed me with was not seen as a real passport by the Indian government. So I guess I'm not going to India. I'll be honest, I was a little bit upset. In these situations, I try to remember how everything happens for a reason, but sometimes you gotta let yourself feel. This sucks. I went online and I manually checked every US embassy in the entirety of Europe, but no one had appointments available for months, except one unexpected location, Casablanca, Morocco. Looks like I'm going to Morocco tomorrow. So I quickly booked a flight to Morocco the following day and I headed to the airport. Oh yes, it's an emergency. I wasn't actually entirely sure Morocco would accept my emergency purple US passport, but I hoped for the best. It worked. I'm in Morocco. To my relief, they let me in. And I got on the train, headed to the US Embassy, dropped off my passport, and then all I could do was wait. <sighs> well, just like that, my passport is at the Embassy, in the process of being processed. They told me that it's gonna take about two weeks, so that means I have two weeks to kill here in Morocco. I think I know what I'm gonna do. <sighs> well, I just got a ticket to Dakla. I don't know how long of a bus ride this is going to be. I'm thinking it's going to be about 12 hours, so I can't prepare with some snacks. I randomly decided to book a bus from Casablanca to the very far south to a city called Dakla. Well, here I am. See, my trip to Morocco, this wasn't an accident. Even though I was supposed to be in India, fate redirected me to Morocco. I knew this place had something in store for me. 26 hours later, I am in Dakla. I have no idea where I am right now. I am in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Windy. Suddenly, I was in the middle of the Western Sahara. <laughs> on the bus, I went on couch surfing and I found this guy and asked to stay with him and he said yes. What is your name? Ayman. His name was Ayman. Cool. Ayman graciously let me enter his home. He lived in a traditional Moroccan home and even had a cat. <sighs> a cat. You see, it's probably one of my favorite feelings in the entire world. You know, the feeling you get when you ask yourself, how did I end up in this situation? I like how I'm just in the middle, just surrounded. That feeling, that's the one. <laughs> For the next few days, I got to see how they live around here. You ever imagine finding mushrooms in the Sahara? With ice cream. In the Sahara? Sahara? <laughs> To think that I wasn't even supposed to be here right now, and if I had my way originally, I never would have met this guy. That's my dad. Hello. Hello. Bien. That's uh, my family business. Uh, wow. For the next four days, Ayman and I got very close. I wanted to go on an adventure with Ayman. I wanted to think of something new for him and for me to experience collectively. Exactly. So I wasn't expecting the Sahara to be raining. I'm gonna be honest. I had a deep curiosity of what it would be like beyond the city, deep in the Sahara. I wanted to go on a desert expedition. And turns out that's something I'm in has never experienced either. I know it's really crazy because I'm from here, but uh, I just never had the chance. Let's so, do it. Are you up for it? I'm down, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> 
How to plan a deep Saharan desert expedition. Step one, find someone with a four x four. Do not try to drive through the desert without one. Said yes. He said yes. Step two, find someone to guide you. I know it's tempting, but do not try to navigate the desert on your own. It is big and hot. Step three, get some food that can survive the desert heat, like vegetables, for example. And step four, water. Do not forget water or you will literally die. All right, so today is the day that we are going to the depths of the Sahara Desert. How are you guys feeling? Great. Good. What about being kidnapped? Is that a possibility? Nobody's gonna kidnap me, at least. Oh! You ready? Yes. We're ready. Of course, of course, baby. The plan started out with just Ayman and I, and somehow we ended up with quite the group. Ready. In fact, the group ended up being so big that we had to find another 4x4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there it was, that beautiful feeling once again. How did I end up in this situation? I will truly never know. It looks like we were invited inside for some tea. And the further from the city we drove, the more wild things started to become. We drove the first few hours on paved roads, but then we arrived to a dead end. Where are we? We are in nowhere. We don't know where we are. We are in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so we're officially in the middle of nowhere in the desert. No cell phone service at all. This is where the actual wilderness started. Yes, what? Yes, what? Yes, what? This was the beginning of the true Sahara Desert. So this is where we're deciding to set up camp, stay for the night, maybe two nights, and we'll see what's going on around here. Everything was perfect, except one thing. Uh, I think it's gonna rain. Uh, I didn't expect my first Sahara experience to be um, rained on. I really didn't know that it's even possible to rain in this desert. Experiencing the most rainy time in the desert in almost 10 years, priceless. The next morning, the rain cleared up. And to my surprise, we woke up next to a giant herd of free roaming camels. <laughs> it was almost cheesy how perfect it was. But I actually had another reason to be happy that morning. It was the morning of September 26, which is my birthday. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't really feel the need to. I was just excited to be where I was with a great group of people in a crazy place in the world. If things had gone my way, I never would have been able to celebrate the coolest birthday of my entire life. Hi, we stole your camera to... Uh to make a video for your birthday, for your gold birthday. We wish you all the best, we wish you a birthday and a good life long, long time inshallah. It's called the Maro Cake. 